Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. The hottest spot on the front lines still the eastern part of Ukraine, as you probably know Lysychansk city was taken by Russian forces recently and now they want to push to Siversk. There were some of the fights ongoing near to Bilohorivka, just to remind you around one month ago Russian forces tried to crossed the river in this area but were devastated by Ukrainian artillery, however now they took this place. They are now controlling this major crossroad over here and they may use two of the roads actually to get to Siversk. For now the weather is hot and dry. That is why they may just go across the fields and if we go to the satellite image of the map, you see that there are many fields but still there are some kind of small rivers and lakes there. Those are natural obstacles for the armored vehicles and tanks, that is why they have to use roads to get to Siversk. Siversk now is the main defense line for Ukrainian forces in that area. Now let's go from Siversk to Bakhmut area on the south. Bakhmut is one more major target for Russian forces. And as you can see, they were able to advance their troops to reach the M03 road, which is leading to Bahmut. Actually, they are very close to the city. Let me check the distance. Uh, so it is around 10 kilometers, really nothing. So that is why they use the artillery systems to fire to the city. They still use that barbarian technique to destroy every building in a city. And after that, throw their forces to the area. Let's zoom out a little bit, my friends, and let's check the timeline for the events. So it happened just day before uh, yesterday, and you can see uh, a light advancement of uh, Russian forces, and they are taking this road under their control. This road is also leading to Slavang. So probably their major tactics is to attack Slavansk from three directions. From the north, from the northeast, and from the south, from Bakhmut area. But here we have also natural obstacle, uh, this small river that goes across the Bakhmut city. Even though this river is quite thin, but still it's a great obstacle for Russians to reach uh, this area after the Bakhmut. If we speak about the future perspectives for Russian in that region, I do not expect them to reach Slavansk or Kramatorsk cities in nearby future. They need to regroup their forces first, get some reinforcements, and after that probably they're gonna start their major attack towards those settlements. Slavansk and Kramators, together with some of the small towns, create a big settlement urban area and it's not good for Russian army to take the war on those kind of territories. They would rather use artillery systems and shell everything around. They don't want to throw their forces to the cities. That is what happened in Serodonetsk. Then they attacked the city but we were able to push them away, but finally, obviously, they took the city because still they have superiority in their weapons. However, we fire uh, the HIMARS rocket artillery systems toward their command centers and military bases and also ammunition depots. Now let's turn on the fire detection and here you can see, for example, near to Lysychansk and Siversk, you see Russia fires towards Ukrainian controlled territory quite a lot and we fire to their place near to Izum, where they have the main base for Russian military. This fire detection option really shows the actual situation on the front lines and where are the hot battles ongoing. You can also see their fire near to Alche they have ammunition depots there as well, so Ukrainian artillery was able to fire to that place as well. How many kilometers are from, let's say, secure position? 79 kilometers, almost the maximum range for the rockets we have. I just want to check the Kharkiv area. My friends, not many explosions and fires in the area. It means the situation is standstill. Russia was able to gain some of the territory on the north, but they were pushing hard just to deflect our forces from the eastern part of Ukraine. And if we speak about the south part of the front lines, uh, everything is standstill, the line is not moving, but if we go to the fire detection you see 
we have lots of fires near to Kherson in Kherson area and Russia fires to Ukrainian controlled territory and again Ukraine fires towards Russian controlled territory just recently it was some shelling near this place and I do expect and I wait for the massive Ukrainian counterattack it's gonna be I think in late August or beginning of September and now let's go for some news and events all right we have some kind of Russian unmanned air vehicle and it's called Altris the development of this state-of-art machine started together with Bayraktar development at the same time and this Russian project was ongoing for 10 years already and they were able to build one prototype and how many Bayraktars have been built I think around 300 and today Russian officials say that they will close this project it will not be built any longer why did it happen well I think mostly they used Western components to make that machine no more components no more Russian Bayraktar or they call it Altuis almost like altruist Azerbaijan has delivered medical supplies for Ukraine and some humanitarian aid uh, for us. It's great, my friends, to see that support. By the way, this is Illusion 76 of Silkway Airlines. They also have Boeing 747-8s, uh, fantastic airplanes, queens of the skies. This is how our army shuts down Russian rockets in Ukrainian airspace. Obviously, we shut down almost 80% of everything that Russia fires, all of their cruise missiles mostly are being shut down by our anti-missile systems, but 20% usually go to somewhere near to the target. Russia started to withdraw their forces from the border with Finland. That happened after Finland was agreed to join NATO. Mainly, there are two reasons for that. First, don't mess with NATO countries. And reason number two, they need armored vehicles in Ukraine. And our job now is to turn those vehicles to scrap. Russian President Putin welcomed Chinese leader Xi Jinping to visit Russia, but Xi Jinping refused to go there. Why? We don't know. Donetsk City, my friends, and no civilian buildings were destroyed, but the ammunition depot of the Russian army. We could have used M777s or HIMARS rocket artillery system or maybe there was some kind of local resistance there in the area who knows Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs Sergei Lavrov visited Mongolia today and you see that symbol on that vase probably they want to get some denazification the last night we were able to show the huge ammunition depot in Kandivka Russian controlled territory we already destroyed more than four main Russian ammunition depots and because of that I think Russia will take a break advancing on the eastern part of the front lines also video of Suhoi Su-25 Ukrainian Air Forces. We call it flying tank and it's analog of A-10 of United States Air Forces. Awesome machine and we still have them and they fly a lot. Yes, my friends, I hope also to fly very soon. And if you like this video, press the like. If you don't like it, press dislike. But anyways, if you want to support my channel, there are some of the links in the video description just below. My friends, I wish you a peaceful sky wherever, wherever you are. Have a great time.